Good morning friends. So, we have been doing text completion exercises and uh, building vocabulary. So, we have seen several exercises and items based on that. You know that vocabulary is one of the quint essential parts of uh, or while preparing for competition exams or competitive exams rather. You should also know that whether it is your listening or speaking or uh, uh, even writing, you need good vocabulary. Without vocabulary, um, you just won't be able to give voice to your ideas. Vocabulary, in its all formats, in all, in its all aspects, should be paid lot of attention to. Soon, I will be doing suffixes, prefixes, and uh, um, uh, uh, prefix suffix. So those are called affixes. Also with you. So prefixes are those words bits that are attached in uh, front of a root word, suffixes after that, they also add a lot of meaning to the uh, words. So, we will be doing that also, a couple of exercises based on affixes also. And soon, I will be taking you to uh, Greek words, uh, not exactly Greek words, but words that are uh, derived from Greek mythology and they have come to become a part of our everyday lexicon. So, that is extremely important for all of us to um, know, especially those who are advanced learners and who want to appear for various competitive exams. Coming back to our text completion uh, exercises, you should note that, that such questions require the readers to identify the most appropriate words that fits the blank. I cannot stress enough on this. For this, we must be familiar with the words that are presented to us as the options to eliminate other choices uh, need to be very clear about. Okay? So, use all the help that you can to uh, you can get to build your vocabulary. This lecture, this course in uh, from NPTEL IIT uh, is only a supplementary uh, assistance to what you should be doing yourself. You should read books, there are websites and mobile applications also nowadays. So, you make the most of technology in a good way. Remember, to some degree, most options make sense when, uh, try, when we try to fit into the sentence. This does not mean that any of them will do. The most appropriate word or phrase to fill the blank will help the sentence make sense, but without adding value to it. Text completion ex questions not only measure the uh, reader's vocabulary, but also their reading ability. Remember that. So, while trying to fit the word that you think is the answer, make sure that you read the complete sentence again and always verify your answers, particularly true about those kinds of sentences where you have a uh, set of uh, two blanks, as in this one, um, as in the sentences that we are going to do soon. So, uh, now I am going to show you just uh, a slide which has only one blank, please take a look at this. This is our first exercise of the day. Take a look at the slide. The enlightenment ideas spread to enlightenment, is, please note it is in capital E, it is a movement, it is a if side of it is a kind of philosophy. Okay, so, we are talking about a, the European ideals of enlightenment that uh, just that is just a background. The enlightenment ideas spread to North American colonies and found a people reduced to quasi slavery by Britons, um, infelicitious, onerous, dubious, nebulous, odious taxation schemes. Which could be the best answer? You should know what are these options and what do they mean. The best answer here is onerous. Remember, infelicitious means uh, marked by or producing unhappiness, it can also mean not appropriate in application or defective. Something is onerous if it cannot be easily uh, lifted or bone. Bone as in, please look at the, it is not born, but bone. To bear something and this is the past of this, a bone. Okay, so, uh, 
uh, we are not talking about bone and bone. So, which cannot be carried. Dubious of course, is uh, fraught with uh, suspicion, uncertainty, doubt. Nebulous means unclear, cloudy, lacking definite form and something is odious if it is very evil. So, remember in this particular sentence, honorous is the best choice. Choices uh, may appear as if anything can be or any word can be the best fit, this is not. Remember, adjective is about taxation. So, what kind of taxation? Evil taxation, okay, you can use the word evil taxation, odious taxation, but onerous is the best one because it cannot be carried, it cannot be borne. So, onerous is the best one, you cannot bear this kind of taxation. Okay, it can be, I agree, dubious or nebulous, odious, infelicitious, but people are reduced to quasi slavery. So, therefore, they get weary and onerous, me, onerous means weary. Let us look at the second exercise of the day. She said that she had problems with her professors, that political and economic liberalism can coexist comfortably within the territorial boundaries of the sovereign state. Malapropism, presumption, anathema, filibuster, anachronism. Now, all these are quite literary kinds of words, some of them are especially malapropism, but do they? Professors, what? Best answer is presumption. See, these are all fancy, high sounding words. Malapropism means unintentional misuse of a word by confusion, okay, uh, with something that sounds similar. Presumption is an assumption, presume, yeah, there is a book called, novel called Presumed Innocent by Scott Turrow. So, it is assumed, someone is assumed or believed to. So, it is, it sort of stands for beliefs. Anathema is a detested person, this is an anathema to me, such kind of ideas are anathema to me. Filibuster is either a tactic for delaying or obstructing legislation by making long speeches or the person who does it. So, that is filibuster, tactic for delaying or obstructing legislation by making long speeches or the person who does it, that is a filibuster. Anachronism, I think we have done it in one of our earlier uh, classes. It is something located at a time when it could not have existed or occurred. For example, a Shakespearean character wearing a uh, watch, a wrist watch. Okay? Sometimes uh, filmmakers do that. They set their story in contemporary times. So, they take their story back to those times still Shakespearean times, but add something new to it, uh, you know, something anachronistic just to break the fourth wall. In one of the uh, films based on Shakespearean plays, I think it was Midsummer Night's Dream, a 90s movie where the characters were uh, shown riding a bicycle and all, uh, I think we all know that, that in Shakespeare's times, so we, we did not have the invention of the bicycle. So, that is anachronism, but it adds pleasure to uh, uh, you know the way we watch movies. Now, uh, remember in this sentence filibuster and anathema are out of the question, but less choices of a professor making a malapropism. So, political and economic liberalism has higher chances of existing as presumption than an anachronism. So, that is the answer presumption. Let us move on to the next exercise, look at it. He ended his speech by declaring that empathy guides us in our efforts to adulterate, exaggerate, alleviate, exonerate, exacerbate suffering and make the world a better place. Now, see empathy and suffering and it should remove suffering, empathy should. So, look at the arms and choices here. Adulterate, exaggerate, alleviate, exonerate, exacerbate. And the best answer is, of course, alleviate. Adulterate means corrupt or make impure by adding foreign substances. To exaggerate means 
to enlarge something beyond bound, bound so the truth, exaggerated lies, exaggerated truths, exaggerated ideas. Alleviation or elevated can be defined as provide physical relief or just make easier, alleviate. To exonerate somebody is to pronounce her not guilty of criminal charges and to exas exacerbate is to make worse. The speaker is talking about making the world a better place by doing something about suffering. We cannot choose adulterate, exaggerate, exonerate, exacerbate, etc. Alleviate is the only option that fits. Let us move on to the next exercise. With the rise of sleep tracking apps. The instrumental and dash logic of the market has finally conquered one of the last domains that was reasonably free from economic concerns. Quantifying, qualifying, adulating, archaic, impartial. Look at the tone of the sentence, sleep tracking apps, the instrumental and what kind of logic of the market. The best answer is quantifying, you are quantifying sleep by, uh, by uh, inventing apps about tracking your sleep. So, quantify means express as a number or measure or quantity uh, and qualify means uh, meets requirement or prove capable. Now, if you are being flattered in an obsequious manner, you are being adulated, adulation. Many people adu uh, have lot of adulation for the great actors, for um, cricket stars, okay, sports stars, politicians. So, they are adulated, worshipped. That is not what it means here. We are not adulating any app or any sleep. We are measuring it, so quantifying. Hmm? Something is archaic when it is obsolete, old, outdated. Remember that we have done all these. Hmm? To be impartial is to show lack of favoritism, unbiased, unprejudiced. We will also do synonyms very soon. Okay? So, keep adding all these words to your uh, mental repertoire. We can easily remove adulate here. Okay? Now, passage has a lot of clues in it. One is the fact that it is talking about apps for tracking sleep. The apps quantifies rather than qualifies sleep. It may be that the market's logic is neither archaic nor impartial, but because the passage has already indicated that it is talking about quantify something and already use the word instrumental in the process, quantifying fits better than any other option provided. Let us move on to the next exercise please. Woman shouted a voice be close behind her, who dash to you to say that what your master will or will not do before you have asked him insinuates, infers, prevaricates, legitimizes, authorizes. Look at the way sentences. So, who dashed you to say? Who insinuates you to say? What is insinuation? It is like a suggestion, but in a, in a rather devilish way. You insinuate, you do not suggest, you in, when you insinuate somewhere, you are saying something in a uh, let us say in a uh, in a demeaning way. Infers, who infers you to say? Infers is like conclusion, prevaricates, legitimizes you to say, authorizes you to say. So, the best answer is authorizes you to say. Okay. Insinuate as we have already seen is a subtle uh, insert in a subtle manner suggest in a manner, infer is by conclusion, by deduction, you are prevaricating if you are trying to be ambiguous, deliberately ambiguous or unclear in order to mislead. So, you prevaricate. If it is legitimized, it is made legal and to authorize means to give power or authority to. So, except legitimize and authorize no other word fit, uh, fits in this sentence. Look at the passage. Uh, so, when you look at the um, exercise again, you will have to choose between legitimizes and authorizes. Now, it is not legality of it, it is who gave you the authority to say, authority is or who authorizes you to make such kinds of judgments about your master, that is the best response. Confusion should be between legitimizes and authorizes and I repeat 
legitimizes has a more legal term to tone to it. So, please stick to authorizes. Who gave you the permission? That is the answer. Next, please, please look at the slide. If she had only lived, I could have been angry and cruel towards her with some justification, but to be dashed towards a poor dead woman recoils upon myself. Veracious, venal, vicarious, vindictive, venial. We have done all these words, right? She is dead and to be, he cannot be, uh, so it has to be a negative word, but gives you the clue. Best is vindictive. All the options provided are adjectives, remember? Now, we have to uh, understand that because all are adjectives, anyone can fit. So, look at the meanings of all this. What is vindictive? Someone who avenges himself. A veracious person is someone like, veracious comes from the word veracity, that is truth. Veracity of it, we often say, no? Check the veracity of it, truth of it, authenticity of it, genuineness of it. Somebody is venal when they are capable of being corrupted. These are the words we have done, easily confusable words. If you, sh if you may recall your earlier classes or sessions for this course, venal and venial. Venial is easily excused or forgiven. It cannot fit here. Vicarious means experiencing something for the uh, at second hand. You know, you live a celebrity's life vicariously by watching uh, them on television, in reality shows, their interviews, or reading about them. And we we live their lives vicariously. Oh, if only I could be like this. So we are so much interested in them. Therefore. There is a huge market for um, uh, programs and materials based on celebrities, all kinds of celebrities. They could be a pop icon, they could be a, um, a sports star or even a businessman. So, we like them, we want to be like them, so we want to read or know more about that. We live vicariously by reading about them, or by watching them on in any form. Vindictive is malice, ill will, desire to hurt, motivate to, uh, or motivated by spite and resentment. Okay? It can also mean disposed to seek revenge, so vindictive. So, you should know that could have in the first part of the sentence and but that comes later suggests that the word that we are looking for should encompass anger and cruelty with some justification. Only vindictive fits the bill. Venial obviously will not, that is forgiveness. Being habitually truthful towards a dead man or dead woman does not make a lot of sense. So, we can strike off veracious. We can strike out venial too, but vicarious being vicarious towards a dead person does not make sense at all. Best answer vindictive, because anger, cruel, but all those things give you the, all those words give you the clue. Let us look at the next slide. The dash fanaticism inspired by an art or a science was evident in this man. It betrayed itself in the strange persistent abstraction of his mind expressed by his dress and bearing, which were in keeping with the peculiarities of this person. Volatile, overweening or zealous. Now, the best choice here is zealous. Answer is C. It betrayed itself in the strange persistent abstraction of his mind expressed by his dress and bearing, which were in keeping with the anomalous, preposterous and prodigal. Now, um, we have already seen that the best choice for the first section is zealous. Overweening means either unrestrained, especially with regards to feelings or presumptuously arrogant. Zealous means marked by an active interest and enthusiasm. So, fanaticism is the only word, fit, uh, word that fits. It causes uh, uh, persistent abstraction, the choice cannot be volatile, active, 
it is uh, uh, cannot be volatile. Active interest suits fanaticism as adjective better than unrestrained or arrogant. Volatile is uh, something that is explosive. Here zealous fanaticism is the best answer and the set 2 best choice is anomalous. Anomalous means deviating from the general or common order or type. Something is preposterous if it is incongruous or if it invites ridicule. Prodigal means recklessly wasteful. A peculiarity has a higher chances of being described as preposterous or anomalous than being recklessly wasteful. The prodigal son, I have already told you, is a biblical story. A son who used to waste a lot of money, he was driven out and uh, he comes back or he, uh, uh, once he leaves his father's, her rich father's house and then he wastes away, squanders away all his uh, legacy he or whatever money he had on him and then he returns without any money. So, return of the prodigal, someone who has been, who is used to wasteful expenditure that does not fit here at all. The passage says that the dress and bearing of the person were in keeping with the peculiarities of the person. So, it is not inc incongruous. Incongruous means something which does not match. And nowhere in the uh, passage it in indicates that he was subject to any ridicule. So, these points make anomalous a better choice than preposterous. Let us move on to the next slide. For the sugar industry and the uh, Martinets, purveyors, reprobates of sugar re rich foods, this remarkably noxious, obtuse, resilient century old consumption has been the gift that keeps on going. The best choice for section or for the first blank is purveyors. None of the options given uh, sounds like strange people. Okay? Perhaps we should take a closer look at the different uses of these words. A Martinet is a disciplinarian, you should know these words, disciplinarian. Someone who demands exact conformity to rules and forms. A purveyor is someone who supplies provisions, especially food. A reprobate is, who, uh, you know, uh, he is a person without moral scruple, scruples. And we are talking about sugar industry and sugar rich food. So, purveyor is someone who supplies provisions especially food. So, that is the sugar industry and therefore, it fits. Second choice or uh, second answer is resilient. Something is noxious that is your one first choice if it is injurious to physical or mental health. Somebody is obtuse if he, sh if he or she is lacking in insight or discernment. Resilient means tough, elastic, someone who can re uh, rebound easily. A gift that keeps on giving can be nothing but resilient. It cannot be noxious or obtuse because it is a gift. Next set, we had come upon a cat that was squatting on the sea wall to eat from a parcel someone had discarded there. The thin grey animal hunkered down and scowled, growling and whining at the same time, but it allowed Carla to stroke its back as it lowered its head to the food once more. It was a wizen and unrous, scabrous, fetuous specimen with one ear chewed to the shape of a rosebud and bare patches on its sides and back where unhealed sores were exposed. I found it amazing that such a feral, emaciated, emancipated, emanated creature should permit itself to be petted by a stranger and that Carla would want to do such a thing. Even more astounding, placating, tormenting it seemed to me then was that the cat had such a keen appetite for vegetables and rice. Please give yourself a moment, go through it very carefully. The best answer for first uh, fill in the blank is scabrous. Onerous means burdensome, we have already seen it. 
while ago. Scabrous means rough to the touch, covered with scales or scurf. Fatuous means devoid of intelligence. Now, cat cannot be fatuous. And the rest of the sentence describes its physical features and the linking word and comes before the blank. So, it is safe to assume that the best choice is a word that would describe some physical aspect of the cat. Hence, scabrous is the best choice. Scabrous means rough to the touch, covered with scales or scurf, S C U R F. And then, then the uh, physical form of the cat it is emaciated, the answer is choice 2, emaciated. The cat is emaciated because it is hungry, it is not, it has not been given food if it is very thin from disease, hunger, cold, the elements. Okay. It is emancipated if it is free from social uh, restraints, but that does not, a cat cannot be emancipated. To eminent means to give out something, a breath or odor. We know nothing about social restraints of the cat world. So, let us strike off emancipated and best answer is emaciated, which is already hinted in the previous sentence, in the previous section. And it was astounding, that is the third choice, number three, astounding means surprisingly impressive as to stun, overwhelm taken aback, astonishing. Placating means to pacify someone by acceding to their demands or granting concessions or and tormenting means treating cruelly. Even more is a clue here, because uh, in the previous sentence the word amazing is used. The superlative is, is, uh, is the word here, so astounding, placating and tormenting fits the category? No, they do not. Okay. So, it has to be astounding. Okay. So, amazing, astounding, they are the words, superlative kind of words. So, it has to be an adjective of that nature. Let us look at this one now. With the rise of Hitler, the dash of medical science shifted from Germany and Austria to US and the lingua franca of medical science shifted from German to English. Visit nexus tiff prolixity gestalt. The best answer is nexus. We are looking for a noun here. Someone is visit if they have a, a sticky property. Nexus means connection between things. A tiff is a quarrel. Prolixity is tendency to be verbose. Gestalt is a configuration of elements and it cannot be here. Yeah, so, nexus of medical sciences. Remember that the second part of the passage is uh, whole, it holds a clue, it tells us that medical science used to be connected to Germany somehow like the language German used to be. So, Germany and German were the center with the rise of Hitler, everything shifted, the nexus, the group, the connection shifted. That is, that is why the best choice is nexus. Thank you very much and we will continue in our next class.